our math education system has a serious problem. In the latest 2018 PISA exams, an international standardized math test administered every three years to 15-year-olds worldwide, the United States placed 38th in math globally. This is by far the worst out of all developed countries. Now, we know that many American students struggle with math, which also caused them to struggle with other STEM subjects. But this has become quite concerning, as in just the last decade alone, we have seen the development of nearly 2 million new STEM jobs. With the future of our country so intertwined with tech, America is in the midst of a math education crisis. Today, I'll be taking you to see how I've searched for our students' struggles in math and the solution I propose through the lens of sports training. Growing up, I did not struggle with math, but instead I had a hard time picking up sports. Now, I know what y'all must be thinking. Nathan, you're Asian. You're supposed to be good at math and not that great at sports. But today, I want to prove that myth untrue, and I want to show you how I became an athlete and how anyone can become good at sports. In elementary school, I was out of shape and unathletic. I hated sports. I mean, I tried soccer, swimming, tennis, and even basketball. But I just wasn't interested in it. My mother became quite concerned, and she asked some other parents for advice. That's how we later found out about physical training. The following summer, when I was nine years old, I was enrolled at the Orthopedic Special Wing Hospital in Salt Lake City, Utah, or TOSH as I came to call it. Now, this program at TOSH consisted of weekly 75-minute sessions of treadmill training for speed or plyometric drills for agility. And the first summer was quite tough. I'm going to be completely honest with you. The only reason that kept me going were the in-and-out double-doubles my mom got from me after each session. But by the second session, by the second summer, things got a little better as I began to see some progress. And by the third summer, I finally hit my goal of running 15 miles an hour for 15 second burst on the treadmill. And through that experience, I saw how far I'd come. After the third summer, I started middle school and playing lacrosse. Although I was the only member of the team who had never touched the sport before, my hard-won athleticism and confidence allowed me to pick it up quite quickly, and I've continued playing with Ross to this day. Unlike sports, math has always come easy to me. In eighth grade, I was one of four students representing my home state of Utah at the National Math Counts Competition in Washington, D.C. And I've done many com math competitions since, including the American Invitational Math Exam and Harvard-MIT Math Camp. But I'm also the founder of the math club of my former high school, as well as the coach of the middle school math competition team, which went on to win second place in state. However, what's more important is over the past three years, I've gotten the opportunity to tutor many middle school and high school students in math, and I've seen firsthand how many students struggle with math. Now, these students I tutor are very intelligent and have a lot of potential, but starting from a young age, they just aren't taught correctly. Thinking of how I could help them, I thought back to how I learned math. As early as kindergarten, my parents would do mental training with me. Whenever they had a chance, they would ask me, Nathan, what's 8 plus 7 or what's 28 plus 17? And when I wasn't able to answer immediately, they would teach me some tricks and strategies and we would practice some more. Eventually, number calculations became like a game to me. And my understanding of numbers and their operations got deeper, my calculation speeds got faster, and math overall became easier for me. So, I know what you must be thinking. Mental training is all about the non-mathematical drills and exercises. However, this isn't true. Numbers have patterns, and mental training trains us to understand those patterns and also develops our number calculation skills. So now, let's see how our students are struggling with math. Let me show you some examples of the linear equations one of the basic concepts in algebra. In the first example, it's quite easy for the teacher to introduce the concept. You have six x equals 12, so you just divide both sides by six, and you end up with x equals 12, x equals two. Now, let's move on to example two. This looks a bit more complex, as in the first step, if the students are unable to do the multiplication in their head, then they must write it out on the side. And then in the second step, if the students are unable to do the subtraction in their head, they must also write that on the side. But coming down to the final steps, it's exactly the same as the first question. Nevertheless, some students are starting to struggle. Now, let's look at example three. In example three, it's a lot more complex, and this is because many students struggle with fractions, and the first two steps are all about fractions. And then moving on, in the next three steps, you need a variety of number calculation skills, just like example two. 
However, coming down to the final steps, the algebra itself is exactly the same as example one and two. So, how come our students are beginning to struggle with math when they hit algebra? It's not because the algebra itself is hard, but rather because their number calculation skills are too weak. So, why is this? To find the root of this problem, I researched the history of the U.S. math education system, and I found that the weakness of U.S. math and science education has been recognized as a major concern even as early as the 1980s. And the NCTM, the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics, uh, recommended that problem solving should become the key to school math. Now, 20 years later, in 2001, there was a new problem addressed. There's this growing achievement gap between various groups of U.S. students. And in order to combat this, Congress passed the No Child Left Behind Act and thus developed the Common Core curriculum. Released in 2010, Common Core's math curriculum focused more on the reasoning, analysis, and problem solving as opposed to tra traditional drilling. So, ever since the 1980s, our government has emphasized critical thinking in math. Now, this has worked out very well for those most talented students. The U.S. has developed one of the best international math Olympiad teams in the world. If we look at the last 10 years of U.S. math Olympiad rankings, we see that the U.S. has placed first in the world four times in the last 10 years and has never once placed outside the top 10. However, this emphasis on critical thinking has not helped the average U.S. math student. If we look at the last 10 years of PISA rankings, the U.S. has only gone down in the last 10 years. So, why is this happening? Too many educators and parents in our country feel that calculating isn't math. And math is more about the thinking process and the critical thinking. Now, this is true for high-level math, such as algebra, geometry, and calculus. Unfortunately, as you have seen from the examples, without basic calculation skills, many students will never be able to truly experience the critical thinking in higher math. We have missed one critical point in our math education system. It is the mental training in the early stages in math, like arithmetic. Not every student needs this mental thing. For those most talented math students, they know numbers naturally. That's why our system has never prevented them from growing. However, for the most of us, without mental training, we may never be able to master number calculations skills to a point where we can approach higher math with confidence. So, how can we fix this? Eight years ago, when I was struggling in sports, if I just continued to play and work on the sports skills, it doesn't matter how fun it would have been, I never would have been able to go very far. But physical training's approach was different. It worked on the fundamentals, my athleticism instead of specific sports skills. And although it was tough and challenging and boring at the beginning, it allowed me to find the joy in sports later. This is the same for our students who are struggling with math. We must develop a mental training program that conditions our students to number calculation skills to a comfortable and confident point. And only then can they pick up problem solving and critical thinking skills easily just like I pick up a cross easily after my body was hard in addition for sports. So, six years ago, to eight years ago, I was not an athlete, and nobody, including myself, thought that I could play sports. But physical training changed me by not only building up my athleticism, but also my confidence, unlocking the world of sports to me. And I believe mental training will have that same effect on many of our students by not only building up their number calculation skills, but also their confidence in that unlocking their true potential. Thank you.